Apostle's going to scoop again. this 3.3K pot against Mr. Jeff Boski. Ooh, painful. Painful indeed, Poker Mama. Very painful. But as you saw in the last video, I've instantly reloaded for $1,000. And this is the very next hand played. There's some limpers. There are some graphics problems. So I'm going to superimpose my hand here pretty soon. I limp the small blind and we're five or six ways to a flop. Got to stay focused, can't be tilted, but I might be able to represent tilt. With the ace eight five five double suited, pretty good hand. Could have raised pre, but I'm fine taking a flop. When the flop comes king, jack, nine with two clubs, I'm happy with the nut flush draw, but I don't have much to go with it. Rich bets $55 with top pair, top kicker with a straight draw, queen of clubs blocker, Chris Moneymaker puts in the call with top and bottom and a bad straight draw. And I think it's a pretty clear-cut call for me. Nut flush draw, getting good odds. Hopefully we can cool or someone. Mark also puts in the call with an unknown hand. And we're going to take a turn. I'm rooting for a club. Let's win some of our money back. The turn is a 10 of clubs. At first, I'm excited, and then the paranoia kicks in, and I'm like, oh my god, what if someone has queen nine of clubs? Rich continues to bet. He doesn't care that the flush got there. Would he bet a straight or a worse flush into three people? I am concerned. Uh, it is possible for me to check raise here, but I think out of position, it's better to just be a little bit more underrepped. Put in the call. There is a guy behind us who might have a smaller flush that wants to come along, too. There's a case for denying equity for, from two pair, three pair type hands that could boat up on the river. But after having just been stacked, I think our image is going to be looser than normal. And we put in the call $155. So the only hand we fear is exactly queen, nine of clubs, and the board pairing. So let's hope for a clean river. The river's the nine of clubs. Not only does the board pair, queen eight of clubs now also makes a straight flush. Not to mention the eight seven of clubs, and I don't block any of those. Luckily, it goes check, check, and we win at showdown. Pick up about $400. A good start. Back on the right track. Let's get some momentum. I didn't come all the way to Sacramento to get stacked and not try to win my money back. Let's gamble. The very next hand, we got a bunch of limpers, and we go seven ways to the flop. I got the ace, queen, six, six, and we flop a set. Definitely not the nuts in Omaha. Not too excited about it seven ways, but the action checks around. No one's taking a stab at this one. I'm starting to think I got the best hand. I got the button. Time to charge some draws and get that value. $70 in the pot, and I bet $50. Looking to get action from two pair type hands, pair and straight draw, uh, deny equity from backdoor flush draw, stuff like that. Of course, Apostle calls with the over pair and straight draw, and Rich comes along with the six and a bad straight draw. The turn is a king, which I consider to be a brick. And then action checks around to me, and I think I still got the best hand. I figure one of them would have bet if they had 4-7 seven or 7-9 seven, or pocket eights on the flop. So I'm going to go for value again and bet 150, about 75% uh, of the pot. Backdoor clubs did come in. Action folds to Apostle. He's got a pair. He's got the nut straight draw. But it's probably not good enough to continue, and he makes a good fold. Now action's back to Rich, who is an action player, and he quickly says, pot. And I'm starting to think, wow, am I about to go broke with a set here? But then I go back to my original thought of, I don't think he's ever checking a straight on the flop. Check call, check raise. I don't think he overlimps pocket kings. So I think his most likely hand is uh, now two pair. King eight, king six, king five, possibly also with a flush draw. So I can either call or I can shove. I do have position. 
520 more dollars to call. I don't think it makes too much a difference uh, when I have effectively $700 behind if I do make the call. Now I have to think about what rivers I would fold on. I think I would fold on a like a nine of clubs river or a four of clubs river would be horrible for me and a lot better for his check raising range. Since I don't have any clubs in my hand, it's more likely he's going to have a flush when the river does come a flush. So I put in the call and the river's an eight of clubs. If he has king eight, he has me beat. If he backdoored his flush, he's going to go for value. He shoves all in. He has us covered. And it's time to play another $3,000 pot in Pot Limit Omaha. I put in the call. He says, you're good. He had the boat blockers, but they were not going to work this time when I got a boat myself. And I win a $3,000 pot. And we're now up money just like that. I love Pot Limit Omaha. Such a great action game. And I definitely think I have an edge versus the people at this table. What a great format. I love round by round. 5 5 10 on the live stream. Really gets my blood pumping. I love playing at Stone's Gambling Hall. You should too if you're ever in the Sacramento area. It's about 30 minutes later and the game is now switched to 5 5 10. No limit hold'em. There's three lumps up front. Chris Moneymaker raises it to 55 with pocket sixes in the small blind. I look down at Queens. Of course, we're going to bump this up to 155. Could have made it bigger, but I do have relative position on Moneymaker, and I'm guessing most of the limpers are going to fold anyway. They do fold around to Rich, who comes in with the cold call after putting in 10. He says, yeah, what's another 145? I got the 6-4 suited. Moneymaker calls, and the flop comes Jack 8-5. Moneymaker checks, and normally I'd see bet this board, but my plan is to trap Rich. I want him to fire. He just lost a huge pot. He's a loose cannon, but he checks. Nine on the turn. Same deal. I definitely could bet here, but I want Rich to overvalue his one pair of type hands or just flat out bluff. He's capable of it, but he doesn't. He checks behind. Six on the river, putting a one liner to a straight. Can't value bet now. I check to Rich. Give him one last chance to bluff. He's not falling for it. Moneymaker shows the set on the river, and we lose a $500 pot. Trap did not work out. And we are back playing Pot Limit Omaha, 5 5 10 blinds. There's a lot of limping going on. That's fine. I'm happy playing some flops. Let's see a flop. Eight ways. The whole table's in on it. This is what we call a family pot. We have the Ace 997 for middle set. A pretty dangerous hand in this situation. There are a lot of straights that could possibly be out there. Let's see how the action goes. Everybody checks to me, and I just got a bet for value here. $50 into an $80 pot seems fine. I could pot it, but there's a lot of weakness. I figure at least someone would have led if they had a straight, even two pair. Action folds back to Mark, and he starts thinking about it. Does he have the dummy under the straight, the 6-7? Is he not sure what to do with two pair? Does he have pocket eights? Checks back his whole cards, considers his options, and eventually says, pot. Uh-oh, looks like we're going to have to just call and see what happens on the turn. He makes it 220 to go. Steve looks interested. After checking, he says, pot too. What the hell's going on here? They both checked. A check raise is rare, but a check raise raise is even more rare. They're both repping a straight. Now on the surface, this seems like horrible news for me. Of course, one of them could have pocket tens. That would be way worse. But if they both have the straight, say they both have queen jack, or one has queen jack and the other one has jack seven or seven six, I'm actually doing very well in a three-way pot against two made straights in Omaha. I'll have... Three tens to hit, one nine to hit, three eights to hit, and the board can just go running deuce, deuce, etc. Believe it or not, my equity is going to be around almost 40% three ways here if that is the, their exact hands. We can't take that risk, and we lay it down. After I fold, they get it in. They confirm with each other that they both have queen jack, so they're not going to run it twice. 
The turn is a deuce and the river is a 10. I would have boated, won a monster pot, cracking two nut straights in Omaha, and my gut knew I was a mathematical favorite if they did, in fact, both have the straights with no blockers to my full house. Before this hand, Moneymaker said pocket nines are most likely to hit a set on the flop, and that's what we are laughing about right now. As you can see, my set was a mathematical favorite against two people having the nuts in Pot Limit Omaha. Should have just gambled and got it in. The game continues even after the stream is off. Yep, really sad. Very impressive, sir. <laughs> I mean, when you make two pair, you make two pair. What the? Chris Moneymaker, ladies and gentlemen. Been a pretty good day. I, I can't complain. I've uh, run pretty good. Twelve thirty in the morning. The game is still going. It's transformed into a five, five, ten, p -p 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 pot limit Omaha game. Sitting on just under three grand. Need to go to sleep, but the game is just too good. Old. In for 2,000, out for just over 3,000. The PLO swings were crazy. Uh, a few regrets, a few proud moments. Definitely could have just check called with the set of queens, called any river. Or we could have sucked out, you know. We had a lot of outs, even with middle set. Pretty happy with the eight, seven suited bluff and happy with the uh, set in the other big PLO hand. 